Good day everyone. We are now in the next topic which is the Republic Act 6713. Uh, this, laws, this law is not only applicable to those who are reviewing for licensure examination for teachers and for those who will be taking the principal's test but for those also who are planning to join with the public service. So we have to review this one before we enter government service or in a public service. And of course, those who are already in the public service, this is the high time for you to review the RA 6713 so that we will be reminded always the mandates and the roles and responsibilities as a public officials and employees in the government. RA 6713, or commonly known as the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards for Public Officials and Employees, kagaya ng mga different companies, they have also standards for their employees. Now, in the government service, RA 6713 is the standards for those public officials and employees in the government service. We will be dealing or we will be discussing only salient features of the provisions of the law. We will not be dealing all of those provisions, but uh, mga important provisions lang. This is just a quick review for all of us. It is the policy of the state to promote high standards of ethics in public service. Public officials and employees shall at all times be accountable to the people and shall discharge their duties with utmost responsibility, integrity, competence, and loyalty. We should have to act with patriotism, justice, lead modest lives, and uphold public interest over personal interest. This is a, the declared policies embodied in the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Section 4, Norms of Conduct of Public Officials and Employees. We have eight norms. Number one is the commitment to public interest. Second is professionalism. Third is justness and sincerity. Fourth, political neutrality. Fifth, responsiveness to the public. Sixth, nationalism and patriotism. Seventh, commitment to democracy. And eighth is simple living. So you have to take note of these eight norms of conduct of public officials and employees. Dito lamang gumagalaw ang, ang naturang batas. These eight norms of conduct of public officials and employees. We will go on one by one these eight norms. <clears throat> Commitment to public interest. Public officials and employees shall always uphold the public interest over and above personal interest. All government resources and powers of their respective offices must be employed and used efficiently, effectively, honestly, and economically, particularly to avoid wastage in public funds and revenues. Here, if you are a public um, officials, yung hindi naman kailangan, we should avoid that one in order to uh, avoid wastage in public funds. That, for example, the extravagance of uh, of the purchase of a certain food for uh, trainings. So, kung pwede namang simplihan lang, we have to go for the simple, not for those um, extravagant na mga food, mga social na, di ba? And we have to take note that it is not our funds. 
but it is the funds of the public. So we have to use them uh, efficiently, effectively, honestly, and economically. The second one is the professionalism. It will not only talk about the profession you have, but uh, it talks about how you deal with the people professionally. So public officials and employees shall perform and discharge their duties with the highest degree of excellence. Ayan, professionalism, intelligence, and skill. They shall enter public service with utmost devotion and dedication to duty. They shall endeavor to discourage wrong perceptions of their roles as dispensers or peddlers of undue patronage. So we have to act professionally. Number three, justness and sincerity. So, kagaya ng uh, in a rela in certain relationship, you have to be sincere with your uh, loved one or special someone. Hmm? We have here public officials and employees shall remain true to the people at all times. And they must act with justness and sincerity. And uh, shall not discriminate against anyone, especially the poor and the underprivileged. They shall at all times respect the rights of others and shall refrain from doing acts contrary to law, good morals, good customs, public policy, public order, and public safety, and public interests. They shall not dispense or extend unjust favors on account of their office to their relatives, whether by consanguinity or affinity, except with respect to the appointments of such relatives to positions considered strictly confidential, or as members of their personal staff, whose terms are coterminous with theirs. Okay, next, political neutrality. Uh, dito rin makikita, it is also part of the uh, code of ethics for professional teachers, no? that we have to be politically neutral. All public officials and employees shall provide service to everyone without unfair discrimination and regardless of party affiliation or preference. And of course, as a public official, we have also to become neutral. Especially during election campaign, we could not campaign for and we could not campaign against to a certain um, so to a certain candidate for election. Next, we have five uh, responsiveness to the public from the word responsive. We should have to extend uh, prompt, courteous, and adequate service to the public. Unless otherwise provided by law or when required by the public interest, public officials and employees shall provide information of their policies and procedures in clear and understandable language, ensure openness of information, public consultations and hearings whenever, whenever appropriate, encourage suggestions, simplify and systematize policy, rules and procedures, avoid red tape, and develop an understanding and appreciation of the socioeconomic conditions prevailing in the country, especially in the depressed rural urban areas. As you can see in the conspicuous places in a certain halls of our municipality or our, our city halls, there is what we call a suggestion box. Diba? Nakikita natin mga suggestion box. So that is one way of uh, giving the public, one way of um, yeah, giving the, uh, consulting the public on what are the laps or the, the gaps in dealing with the public service 
of a certain employee. So there is what we call a suggestion box. Para mas maganda yung service in the coming in the coming years or the coming future undertakings. We have here nationalism and patriotism. Nationalism from the word uh, national huh? and uh, patriotism from the word patriot. So we have at all times be loyal to the Republic and to the Filipino people. Promote the use of locally produced goods. Kung may mga locally produced goods tayo, kagaya ng mga uh, co coffee na ginagawa ng ating mga Blaan tribe or mga Manobo tribe or Tagakaulo tribe in the different uh, mountainous areas of our locality. So you have to promote that one. And of course, you have to use that one. Resources and technology and encourage appreciation and pride of the country and people. They shall endeavor to maintain and defend the Philippine sovereignty against foreign intrusion. So whether we like it or not, we, if there is a foreign intrusion, kahit hindi tayo mga member ng military, magiging uh, kaanit tayo o magiging kaisa tayo sa pwersa upang labanan yung mga mananako. So we could, uh, like nangyari sa Ukraine, di ba? The civilians are part na ngayon ng mga uh, military personnel because of uh, they lack uh, military personnel to fight against the foreign intrusion in their country. So, ganun din, we have to uh, defend our Philippine sovereignty against foreign intrusion. So, nakasaad yan sa 1987 Philippine Constitution. 7. Commitment to Democracy Public officials and employees shall commit themselves to the democratic way of life and values, maintain the principle of public accountability, and manifest by deeds the supremacy of civilian authority over the military. They shall at all times uphold the constitution and put loyalty to country above loyalty to persons or party. So above all, we have to become loyal to the laws of the land. There is, um, and no one is above the law. And uh, the one way of having this democratic way of life and values is to participate in the democratic processes, such as this one, election. This is one way of exercising our uh, democratic way of life. So, kailangan din natin na mag-participate. That is our commitment to democracy. Simple living. Okay, yan. We have fear. Simple living, di ba? Nakikita nyo yung, yung mga public officials natin sa Facebook at Instagram. They are uh, having this extravagance na mga or ostentatious display of wealth. No? Now, as a public officials and employees and their families shall lead modest lives appropriate to their positions and income. So, kung ikaw naman ay uh, salary grade 1 in a certain LGU, so hindi naman pwedeng you're going to where all of those from madam madam, di ba? Na mga kasuotan. Because that is a ostentatious display of wealth. And uh, we have to, of course, lead modest lives para maging pamarisan tayo ng ating mga subordinates and, of course, the public na tumitingala sa mga government officials. 
and they shall not indulge in extravagant or ostentatious display of wealth in any form. So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Though, um, this is very, this topic is very broad and simple living. What constitutes simple living and what uh, what did not? No? Hindi natin ma-distinguish. So long that you are, um, it is not extravagant, because ma-feel naman natin kung extravagant na ang ating mga nilalagay sa ating mga uh, ating mga katawan, di ba? And there are like um, mga rings na sinusuot natin instead of having one ring, talagang nilagay mo talaga sa lahat ng mga fingers mo yung mga rings, mga gold rings para ipakita na mas marami o mas mayaman ka sa kanila. So, that is um, extravagant. And hindi naman nakakaliting na, di ba? Kung may maraming mga uh, rings on your fingers, di ba? We have here section 5, duties of public officials and employees. So, tapos na tayo sa 8 norms of conduct of public officials. Let's move on to section 5, the duties of public officials and employees. So, first, act promptly on letter and request. So, to act promptly on letter and request, we have to, uh, we are given 15 working days from receipt thereof. Not to respond the letters, telegrams, and other means of communication sent by the public. So, itong 15 working days, hindi kasali dito yung Saturdays and Sundays. So, technically, uh, this one comprise of more or less 3 weeks. Meron naman tayong 3 weeks. So, that's almost a month to reply letters, telegrams, or other means of communication. And letter B, submit annual performance reports. Lahat ng mga offices are required to submit annual performance reports. Even nga mga quarterly reports, like uh, yung mga financial uh, na mga offices such as Department of Budget and Management, Department of Finance, Treasurer's Office, and the LGU. So they are mandated to submit quarterly. Now, we have here uh, the heads on and other responsible officers of offices and agencies of the government and of government-owned con or controlled corporations that are in the GSIS or Land Bank of the Philippines shall within 45 working days from the end of the year Render a performance report of the agency or office or corporation concern. So, this report shall be opened and available to the public within regular office hours. Okay. And letter C, process documents and papers expeditiously or as fast as you could. We have here... Uh, and the signatories, as far as practicable, not more than three signatories therein. In the absence of the duly authorized signatories, the official next in rank or officer in charge shall sign for and in behalf. But uh, there is a limitation when it comes to the officer in charge, especially if the officer in charge is uh, not a bonded officials. So, meron siyang limitation. Hindi siya pwedeng mag-sign ng mga uh, related to finances. So, that is the general rule. And letter D, act immediately to the public's personal transactions. And as a public officials, we must attend to anyone wants to avail himself of the services of their offices and must all times act promptly and expeditiously. Kagaya sa amin, in our office, kung 
uh, may nag-request, automatically we have to act it. Kasi if you are going to act it uh, by tomorrow, there are clog of request. No? Malilimutan mo yung mga request on that particular day. Letter E, make documents accessible to the public. All public documents must be made accessible to and readily available for inspection by the public within reason, reasonable working hours. So, lahat ng mga uh, public documents should be accessible for inspection. One of these uh, example, one of these documents is the liquidation or the cash disbursement register of a certain uh, local government units or certain agencies para malaman ng public kung saan napunta yung mga pera or the, the government funds na nilalagay sa mga different agencies. Now we have here system of incentives and rewards. The confirmment of awards shall take into account, among other things, the following, the years of service and the quality and consistency of performance. That's one. The second is the obscurity of the position, the level of the salary, the unique and exemplary quality of a certain achievement, and the risk of our temptation, temptations inherent in the work, kagaya ng mga uh, nasa Bureau of Customs. Okay? Incentives and rewards to government officials and employees of the year to be announced at public ceremonies. Honoring them may take the form of bonuses, citations, directorships in a government-owned or controlled corporation such as GSIS, uh, mga, mga GOCCs, local and foreign scholarship grants, paid vacations, like you'll be given a trip for two to England and the like, and uh, they shall likewise be automatically promoted to the next higher position with the commensurate salary suitable to their qualifications. In case there is no next higher position or it is not vacant, said position shall be included in the budget of the office in the next General Appropriations Act. The Committee on Awards shall adopt its own rules to govern the conduct of its activities. Now, what are those prohibited acts and transactions? Letter A, Financial and Material Interest. So as a public officials and employees, we should not uh, directly or indirectly have any financial or material interest in any transaction requiring the approval of their office or, or of our office. For instance, if you are in a, in a school, so of course you have no uh, financial interests like uh, the purchase of the school supplies or office of so office supplies so kailangan wala kang stores na o oh, wala kang tindahan na na mga school supplies or office supplies because technically as a head of a certain school dadaan yung mga approval when it comes to the purchase of those materials so there is a conflict of interest. Diba? And if you are in the uh, Bureau of Customs, diba? and uh, you are uh, purchasing a container van, mga container vans na mga materials, mga ganun, and uh, you are also a, a de dealer or a seller of container vans, mga empty container vans. So that is a conflict of interest. 
since it requires an approval to that transaction or dadaan sa opisina ninyo yung mga container, mga empty container funds so that it's prohibited acts and transactions. Outside employment and other activities related thereto. Public officials and employees during their incumbency shall not, number one, own, control, manage, or accept employment as officer or employee, consultant, counsel, broker, agent, trustee, or nominee in any private enterprise, regulated, supervised, or licensed by their office unless expressly allowed by law. Number two, engage in private practice of their profession unless authorized by the Constitution or law, provided that such practice will not conflict or tend to conflict with their official functions. Kagaya ng mga teachers, uh, they, ha they ought to have a part-time job to other institutions. So they are, they are allowed, provided that there is a consent coming from the superior. Recommend any person to any position in a private enterprise which has a regular or pending official transaction with their office. And uh, these provisions shall continue to apply for a period of one year after resignation. So if there is a conflict of interest, you have to resign. But um, these provisions shall continue to apply for a period of one year. So after their resignation still apply or retirement or separation from the public service so except in case of subparagraph b okay two above but the professional concern cannot practice his profession in connection with any matter before the office he used to be with in which case the one-year prohibition shall likewise apply Next is the disclosure and misuse of confidential information. Public officials shall not use or divulge confidential or classified information officially known to them by reason of their office and not made available to the public, either to further their private interest or give undue advantage to anyone or to prejudice the public interest. The kaya ng mga lists of uh, mga job lords or mga uh, nasa mga lists na mga drug cases, nasa PDEA, mga list of mga persons involved in drug-related cases. So that is not allowed na i-divulge to the public. Next, we have solicitation or acceptance of gifts. We should not uh, solicit or accept directly or indirectly any gift, gratuity, favor, entertainment, loan, or anything of monetary value from any person. So in the course of their official duties or in connection with any operations being regulated by or any transaction which may be affected by the functions of their office, so as to the gifts or grants from foreign governments, the Congress consents to, okay, number one, the acceptance and attention by a public official or employee of a gift of nominal value. So, ibig sabihin, hindi masyadong malaki. Tendered and received as a souvenir or mark of courtesy. Next is the acceptance by a public official or employee of a gift in nature of a scholarship or fellowship grant so this is allowed or medical treatment next is the acceptance by a public official or employee of travel grants or expenses for travel taking place entirely outside the philippines so such as allowance transportation food and lodging of more than nominal value if such acceptance is appropriate or consistent with the interest of the Philippines and permitted by the head of office, branch, or agency to which she belongs. For example, yung mga, mga kotse, that is more than nominal value. 
but for the furtherance of the their roles and responsibilities of a certain government uh, agency so they will accept that one okay the ombudsman shall prescribe such regulations as may be necessary to carry out the purpose of this subsection including pertinent reporting and disclosure requirements nothing in this act shall be construed to restrict or prohibit any educational scientific or cultural exchange program subject to national security requirements. Next, we have here statements and disclosures. This is very, um, the myth of this is the statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth, or the SALN, the submission of SALN. So we have an obligation as a public officials to accomplish and submit declarations under oath course, yung notariado ng abogado, and the public has the right to know their assets, liabilities, and net worth, and financial and business interest, including those their spouses of unmarried children and 18 years of age living in their households. So as a public official, we have to divulge all our assets, as well as, of course, our liabilities in the different banks or any uh, credit firms and uh, we have here statements of assets and liabilities and financial disclosure all public officials and employees except those who serve in an honorary capacity laborers and casual or temporary workers shall file under oath their statement or the sal end and their business interest and financial connection and those of their spouses and unmarried children under 18 years of age living in their households. We have to submit our statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth to the office of the ombudsman. So they are the, the keepers of the salen. And, and the two documents shall contain information in the following the real properties its improvements or lahat ng mga uh, yung mga fair market value or, or the assessed value of the said uh, property personal property and acquisition costs all other assets such as investment cash on hand or in banks liabilities and business interests and financial connections as we have noticed, yung, yung mga nakaraang mga administrasyon ng Supreme Court, ang naging ground ng impeachment ni Chief Justice Corona is yung pag uh, failure of disclosing all the assets sa statements sa salen niya. Ito yung naging ground ng ninyong ng ng impeachment complaint niya. As well as yung co-waranto petition, ang naging ground din is ang salen, itong kay Chief Justice Sereno. So, we could not deny it to ourselves na even the Chief Justice ay napaalis sa pesto because of the salen. So, how much more as is a public or irregular public official in the government service, diba? So we have to file our statement, assets, liabilities, and net worth. Okay? And it should be filed within 30 days after assumption of the office on or before April 30 of every year thereafter and within 30 days after separation from the service. So 30 days after assumption and 30 days after separation from the service. And divestment. Section 9, a public official or employee shall avoid conflicts of interest at all times. But if there is a conflict of interest arises, a public official or employee shall resign from his position in any private 
business enterprise within 30 days from his assumption of office or interest within 60 days from such assumption. So, ganun lang siya kasimple. And uh, there, of course, may kakulang mga penalties if there is a violation of certain provisions of RA 6730. Now, in any public official employee, regardless of whether or not holds office or employment in a casual, uh, temporary, holdover, permanent, or regular capacity. So, itong holdover, uh, for example, there is a failure of election on a certain government or a certain barangay election, may failure, and walang na-elect na barangay official. So, technically, yung incumbent barangay captain will uh, still hold the position in holdover capacity since nag-expire na ang kanyang term. Okay? Committing any violation of this act shall be punished with a fine not exceeding the equivalent of six months salary or suspension not exceeding one year or removal depending on the gravity of the offense after due notice and hearing by the appropriate body or agency. So if the violation is punishable by heavier penalty under another law, it shall be prosecuted under the latter statute. And violations of Section 7, 8, 9 of this Act shall be punishable with a pr imprisonment not exceeding 5 years or a fine not exceeding 5,000 pesos or both in the discretion of the Court of Competent Jurisdiction, disqualification to hold office. And any violation here of proven in a proper administrative proceeding shall be sufficient cause for removal or dismissal of a public official or employee even if no criminal prosecution is instituted against him. Private individuals, of course, though masasabi natin this is uh, only for public officials, but how about those pri private individuals who participate in conspiracy as co-principals? So technically, they are also subject to the same penalty, penal liabilities as the public officials or employees and shall be tried jointly with them. So, walang kawala ang mga private individuals conspiring to a public officials. The third, the official or employee concern may bring an action against any person who obtains or uses a report for any purposes prohibited by Section 8 of this Act. The court which such action is brought may assess against such person a penalty in any amount not to exceed 25,000 pesos. If another sanction here under or under any other law is heavier, the latter shall apply. So these are the penalties. But if you wanted to have a um, full view or full grasp of the certain provisions of the law, you are going to just uh, research RA 6713 and uh, read it with all your heart, with all your uh, understanding of the law. Okay, so that's perhaps RA 6713 of the said law.